What's up, worship boy Iconic? Back again with another video. Yes, sir, we are back with another video, another review, and a little discussion. Thank y'all for watching, man. Before we get started with this review, y'all make sure y'all hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also that notification bell so you can stay in tune with the reviews, the on feats, the sneaker vlog, and the sneaker news, and everything else that comes with the channel. Not gonna waste no time, let's get into it. Boom, we have it here. And you can tell, man, my energy is very low for this, man, because as of right now, I'm feeling like the sneaker game has been ruined. Feeling like the sneaker game has been ruined by this little box right here, bro. The whole game has changed in a matter of year, a year and a half, all because this Air Jordan 1 box. Not the specific shoe, but the shoes that come inside this box, man. Crazy how hype moves, crazy how the whole game has changed in a year and a half, two years, three years, in my opinion. Um, when it comes to this individuality, uh, sneaker choice, sneaker hype, everything, man, this box right here is the one to blame. But this shoe in this box right here, box label reads Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG. Colorway is black slash LT or light smoke gray white. Nor Blanc Gris Fume and Clear. Size on this joint is 11 and a half and retail is 170. Let me go ahead and show this to y'all. Here's the box label, man. Shout out to my boy Zay for picking this up for my boy Keith. This is his shoe. And I decided, hmm, since I got it in hand, let me go ahead and give a review, my honest opinion. Flip the lid. Um, this joint does have a stamp in it right here. Hopefully y'all can see that red stamp right there in that corner. Yeah, put that down there. Smell the leather through the paper. Paper comes like this for anybody that's trying to do any legit checks. I'm not gonna be doing all that today on this shoe specifically. And I just flipped the lid back, man. And honestly, I'm gonna tell y'all, man, y'all hype up anything. Y'all need to chill out. Needs to chill out, bro, cause some of this stuff, Nah. Boom, we have it here. The Air Jordan 1, I don't know, 2.0 Shadow, a Shadow 2.0. And first glance, color blocking is not bad. It's not a bad shoe, I'm not taking away from the shoe. Quality isn't, isn't all that is either. Um, but why is this shoe $300? Anybody explain that to me? Why this shoe $300? $300 for this. That's what y'all paying? $300? Nothing. Buy, hey, buy what you like. After hype. But this, bruh, nah. Anyway. Conversation today. Quick review real quick. Black bottom, black sole. Mid sole is white with white stitching. Upper has black leather and then some smooth suede or Nuba, whatever y'all wanna call it. I'm not a suede or leather expert at all. I'm tired of even going into the details about this stuff sometimes. You got some type of uh, Nubuck or suede, I would say Nubuck, on the swoosh. Got your Air Jordan Wings logo right here, black leather up top, nylon tongue. You do have Nike Air on the tongue, on the little tab. Black laces, it does come with a separate set of laces, which is gray. Um, shoe insert right here. Same old, same old, nothing different from that. Uh, inside, so I'm not, I'm not taking all this stuff off, but it does have a gray um, Nike Air in there with the uh, size and tag. And um, these were produced November 11, 2020 to December 23rd, 2020. And again, man, off rip, off the hip, man, nothing special, nothing crazy about it. But conversation I want to have today, and I just kind of came to the conclusion, I just feel like sneaker culture is just blah, it's dead. It's not really what it used to be in my opinion. And let's, let's just be honest, it's always like that with sneakers, right? Um, it's like the sneaker wave comes and go. Um, being a sneakerhead comes and go. It all depends on who's hyping up the shoes, what's popular. I was watching a lot of stuff from Wally today, and he was just saying the same thing. Like, 
in 2009, 2010, 2011. And it's crazy, like, you know, I'm just looking at this 2021, this 10 years later, right? Which is crazy. Just looking back at some of this stuff and it's just like, that's how I'm feeling right now, man. Like, people don't know nothing about sneakers. People are buying a lot of, buying a lot of unnecessary, well, all of us buying sneakers are unnecessary, a lot of unnecessary, but people are buying colorways and buying shoes uh, off the hype. You know what I mean? Not even, like, don't get me wrong, like, if you like shoes like this, it's cool. Like, you gotta buy what you like. I'm not taking that away from people, right? But, no variety, no love for the game. There's no nothing, bro. And on top of that, like, don't get me wrong, you know, even me, I buy some shoes and hold them sometimes so I can be able to trade some shit that I really want later on in the future because that's where the game is now. I wouldn't mind trading somebody straight up for a shoe, but nobody wants to do that. All the sneaker res resale shops are just buying hype shit. So I gotta buy the hype shit, sit on it, and then trade it for some OG shit that I like because the OG shit is like $600, $700, $500. So it's like, sometimes you be like, damn, I kinda, why are you spending so much money on shoes? It's not me. I have to, I have to make a way to be able to make it even, make it even for me to feel like I, not even that I feel like I won, but I feel like I broke even. You feel what I'm saying? And a lot of times that's all I be doing is breaking even when I sell some shit to get another shoe that's 600. Like, don't get me wrong, I probably paid 170 or let's say 340 max for two pair of Jordan 1s, but if they go to $400 each, then I'm flipping, that's 800. You know what I mean? That's just simple mathematics. That's what I always used to do before I even started getting deep into this shit is that I used to resell like one pair or two pair to get my pair for free. You know what I mean? Because back then, people weren't getting, I wasn't getting money like that, bro. I wasn't able to buy a shoe every week or every other day when they came out, which is crazy to even say now that we do that. But back in the day, bro, we weren't doing that. Sneakers came out every other week or every other month, or, you know, it'd be a bunch of drops, but nobody was grabbing shit. They were letting it sit. And then, you know, a Jordan release would come out and then you say, okay, you gotta have your money for that because it's gonna sell out. But man, personally, to me, the game is just different, man. And I'm not shunning anybody that's buying Jordan 1s or buying stuff, you know what I mean? It's not even just a hype beast. It's, it's, it's not just a reseller. It's all of us collectively, right? I just feel like it's no love in it. And I'm not talking about just about prices or none of that shit, because that's, sneaker's gonna be what it's gonna be. It's always been sneaker resale shops, nigga. We heard about Flight Club when we were jits. When we was in middle school, I was hearing about Flight Club. So that's not the issue. So I'm just talking about just the love, bro. Like. When I grab something like this, like a Deion Sanders, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I find a lot of passion into a shoe like this because like, it reminds me of an era, a time that, you know, was in the 90s. You can't get this time back, bro. Like, and it's just, I remember people wearing this stuff. You know, my older brother's wearing this type of stuff. This type of stuff being popular in high school, at, at least at what the school I went to. Griffies, like Air Max 90s, you know what I mean? Air Max 95s, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, it's just it's just different now, bro. Like wanting the Air Bacons because Tim Hardaway, uh, you know, because they made it for Tim Hardaway and knowing that one of the versions that came out were, were um, the earlier versions of that shoe got recalled because the air on the back looked like uh, it, it offended people in Islam culture because it looked like Allah in Arabic. So little stuff like that, man. Um, the Rising Sun 12s, the all white ones, you know those got recalled because people in Japan, you know what I mean, to the fence to the Rising Sun that was inside the shoe. Those shoes got recalled. So just like, or just knowing, okay, like the Griffey story, the Air Jordan 1, you know what I mean? Like the, the, the storyline, the storytelling, like, or the Nike SBs, why they made the three, like the three bears, you know what I mean? Or the Marges or the Quagmires or wanting skunks back in the day before skunks was like a, a three, four thousand dollar shoe. You know, when we talk about Red Octobers, I remember when Red October was twelve hundred dollars, bro. And that was a lot of money to us. And like, like six, seven years ago, twelve hundred dollars. I spent that on shoes now, but back then that was like twelve hundred dollars, bro. That's no fucking way I'm spending $1,200. But look at it, the shoe's like six, dollars $7,000 now. A certain size, even more. But it's just like knowing that, okay, the Red Octobers was like, was grails. And not in the sense of just because it was hype, it's just because 
at that time, bro, he just, to me, Kanye was was that guy. You feel me? You had the, the Air Yeezy 1s, you know, the Yeezy 2s. And, you know, you had those stuff. And then the Red Octobers came out. It just was a different thing. We had never seen nothing like that. You know what I mean? Wanting, I'm just going rambling. I'm rambling anyway, man. But just, you know what I mean? It's just that passion, bro. It's that passion. Me grabbing an Air Jordan 1, you know what I mean? An Air Jordan 2, bro. And, like, falling in love with it because the nostalgia of Jordan wearing this in the game. You know what I mean? Something like this is just timeless to me. Most people could care less about an Air Jordan 2, but for me, it's far. And I just fell in love with Air Jordan 2 recently. It was like, I, I love like the candy pack, but it's just like me having that knowledge and knowing about that. It's like, there's no knowledge. There's no wisdom passed down on the sneaker game. And maybe I'm maybe I'm tripping. Maybe we overthinking this shit. Maybe, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But it's just like knowing that type of stuff, bro. Knowing that Jordan jumped from the free throw line in 88 is what really changed, changed the game, bro. It's like knowing you want these, knowing you want these because of that. Not because of just the Nike Air. Like, yeah, we drooled over the Nike Air for years as Jits, but just a significant history behind it, bro. Jordan jumping from the free throw line in these joints, you feel me? Like, that's that's the feel. Like, when I talk about that stuff, that's the feeling I get, you know what I mean? Like. Like Raging Bulls, like Raging Bulls, like even though these are the new versions, bro, I had the older ones, but just the Raging Bull pack, bro, was was hot, you feel what I'm saying? Back in the day, the Raging Bull pack was hot in 2009, and where I'm from, I don't know everybody else, people say, oh, they set, and bro, I don't know where y'all was staying, bro, where I'm from, none of this stuff set, at least in my, from my way, or when I went in the mall, none of this stuff was sitting, in my opinion. You know, people were selling this for a whole lot of money. We ain't gonna talk about this back in the day. People was paying six, seven hundred dollars for this pack. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Might not seem like it, but I see. I had homeboys that was selling that shit for that much. But it's just like, you know, just the history, bro. Like, they're just the, the timeless sneakers, bro. Like having shit like a something like a Laney 14, bro. Like, you don't even know, bro. This was this was Grails. Like, this is still a Grail. I want ginger 14s, you feel what I'm saying? But shit like this, bro, like people, the thing is, and the problem is nowadays, everybody only cares about the Air Jordan 1 or all the hype shit that comes out. You know, hype is gonna always be what it's be. The beasts are always gonna come out. Shit, even I have my moments, right? But I still remember, bro. I understand the culture, you feel what I'm saying? I, I, I remember trading shoes with people just to trade them because like, oh, you got a Concord? Oh, you got these Jordan 9s I like? Oh, I don't want to wear these no more. Shit, you want to trade? Okay, cool. Oh, they're a little bit of, let me put $15, $20, $50 on top. Cool, let's do it. Like, that was the culture, bro. Oh, you, you got a 10 and a half? Damn, I need a 10 and a half. Fuck it, bro. Give me, give me $30 on top. You know what I mean? Or let's, let's exchange and get $25. Now, bro, it's like, oh, I need that size. I got, I need a size swap. Oh, nah, bro, I don't do side swaps. You gotta pay for the shoe or sell me your shoe and then pay the difference. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it just the, the game fucked up, bro. It's all fucked up. And I'm sorry to use the profanity, but again, man, to me, and that's what this, 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 this is about. I know people came here to actually see the shoe review, but me personally, I'm gonna say, man, the sneaker culture to me right now is dead. Of course, it will come back. But I personally just don't think like people love it at all. It's just all about the bread, which I'm not mad at. It's, it's time, you know. That's economics. That's that's uh, capitalism. That's what that's what America's about. So we can't be mad about that. But it's just that at some point, I just want people to really get back into the love, man. And you probably hear it in my voice. Like I'm very passionate about it. You know, if I could if I could spend all my checks on sneakers every week, I would. But you know, sometimes I have to space it out. But it's like I do this because I remember a time coming up to where. We really studied this shit. We looked at the Jordan magazine. We we fell in love with the Jordan retro cars. We fell in love with seeing Deion Sanders uh, Diamond Turks coming out. We fell in love with the Griffies coming out. We fell in love with Air Max 95, the 95 neon greens coming out every single time. You know, we fell in love with the South Beaches. We fell in love with the Grinches. Not because Kobe died, but the Grinches was just a a hot shoe, a rare shoe, shoe that just stuck out that people never saw before, man. Like, I fell in love with the Dennis Rodman joints. People don't care for sevens. Somebody will tell me right now they hate this and they'll pick this, which is not a problem, but it's just like the history. 
Olympic sevens, bro. Jordan Wardies. <laughs> Got a number nine on the back, bro. You just had to be there for me. You had to be there. And um, yeah, man, that's it for the video, bro. I ain't gonna ramble on. Y'all let me know what y'all think about the shoe. Let me know what y'all think, man. Is sneaker culture dead? Personally, in my opinion, I feel like yes, it's dead. It will come back at some point. But in my opinion, this Air Jordan, the Air Jordan one down there ruined the game, bro. Down there ruined the game. Hype Beast ruined the game. Resellers ruined the game. And most importantly, the purchaser, bro. The people that buy into the shit. Even me. I bought into some hype shit before. But nowadays, everything's reselling for 300 or better. And I'm not understanding why. You know what I mean? I'm not understanding why. I'm not understanding why people are buying shit just to look at it. You know what I mean? They don't even wear it. It's just weird. Just weird times for me. So, yeah, man. Thank y'all for watching. That's it for me, man. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And also that notification bell so you can stay in tune with the reviews, the on feeds, the sneaker vlog, and the sneaker news, and everything else that comes with the channel. Thank y'all for watching. Future belongs to those who prepare today. Till tomorrow, y'all.